this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about home economics and self-sufficiency. A lot of this channel is about self-sufficiency and gardening, and it's about how to better your life and bettering yourself through education to actually lift people out of poverty and out of the slums. You have to enlighten them and lift them out through lifting their spirits out first. This is how you improve society. You can't really just lift people out of poverty through only money. There has to be a change in their mind and in their hearts. And part of this is why the period around the 1700s and part of the 1800s used to be, they used to call a lot of the thinking of the influencers of society, they called it a, an enlightenment thinking age. And it had to do with, you know, lifting people up and improving society that way. The idea that you were and gaining um, or trying to an, make an, an enlightenment age, see? Uh, <clears throat> sometimes I mix up my words, but there's, there is an enlightenment, enlightenment age. And to really better your life, you have to really get out of poverty spiritually first, then temporally. And people are interested in this idea. The idea that you will be renting for the rest of your life or own nothing, it bothers people. People have heard the phrase recently a lot, you will own nothing and be happy. That is completely false. Your mind and your spirit need to become involved in building and creation. When people retire, when they reach retirement age and retire from their full-time jobs, a lot of them find that when they get home and start doing things, they find their creative in impulses start to increase. They start to find things that new talents and new ways of thinking that they didn't know they had, and then they start to build and create. There's a reason that works and why they do that. It has to do with your mind and your spirit wanting to build and create when, when it's disciplined. When it's not disciplined, you don't really get into that as much. But after a lifetime of work, people are more disciplined. So they sit down and find things that they want to do. Anyway, back to where this has to do with gardening and also self-sufficiency. To study self-sufficiency, one of the things you need to do is compare uh, the direction of society and where you are currently. And what we're starting to see is that um, as technology improves, te the technology is going faster than people can make good decisions for it. That's not a good situation. The other thing is technology is being used to captivate more than it's being used to make people more free. So when let's say the company you're working for they gain access to new technology the first thing they're going to do is turn away jobs and replace those jobs with robots and machines and this is part of why things are not getting better with more technology and you have to ask yourself at one point how far do you want to go with that now one of the things you can do with this there are several demographics in the U.S. that are useful in comparing this information and data. And you can use comparisons among them to figure out if things are really getting better or is another direction better. So first off, what I'm going to do is show you the comparison of home ownership among three populations in the U.S. Those three populations are Amish, 
Mennonites and LDS people. Actually, LDS people or the LDS Church or Mormons are not they're not exactly like Amish and Mennonites. In fact, uh, they embrace technology. Your people who are listening to this probably are LDS mostly, actually. But the comparison to Amish and Mennonites with this population is useful because it shows if the direction of people is going in a good direction or not. Okay, so when you look at Amish and Mennonite communities, they have an extremely high home ownership rate. Okay, for most people and most families, the the instrument through which people are able to sustain their family is housing and shelter. And because of that, they a lot of people interpret whether or not they are able to have a future or if they're wealthy or not depending on if they have a home or, not, or a place to live without being rented to death. And this is why this is an interesting comparison. So Amish communities, home ownership is virtually universal with each family homing, having a home and owning their own land and home. The same with Mennonites. Home ownership is almost, it's, al it's almost hundred percent. Homeownership of LDS pe people, the LDS population, is also very high, but it's not as close as it is. It's not close to the percentages of Amish and Mennonites. Now, homeowner, homeownership of LDS populations is typically 70%. That's pretty good, and it reflects cultural and economic factors and work factors, like the work ethic. But these other populations have work ethic also. Now, we're, point, we're at a turning point in society. We're at a crossroads where societies and the population and the country are going to change immensely in the next few years because of how technology is making stable employment almost impossible in most populations. So that, that presents a lot of challenges. And you, that's, that's why this, this particular video will be extremely useful. It will actually be most useful for non-LDS. <clears throat> but it will be useful for LDS also, as well as others. Now, why is the home ownership percentages difference different in these three populations? Amish and Mennonite both have extremely high property ownership, where LDS populations, apart from them, were thought to have probably among the highest uh, home home ownership percentages. It would be interesting later to compare these three populations with home ownership among uh, Israeli and Jewish populations also as well as others, but that's for another time. But the basic idea is if you take a population of people, um, a lot of where they spend their money and their labor has to do with uh, what kind of desires they have? What do they want? Technology is kind of putting on a ruse over people's eyes, uh, a sort of a deception to embolden them to think that um, that they need things that they don't have. And so they're spending time in areas that are competing with needs and resources in other areas. And by this, I mean they're being pulled away from using their resources and money wisely on things that they absolutely need to live. And that's over time, that's creating problems with uh, where they end up. Also, the educational system is not teaching to focus only on your basic needs. Okay, when you focus on 
things you actually need to live, which are uh, shelter, food, fuel, and clothing, and, you know, tr travel needs. Those are the things you need to live. If you spend outside of those areas, it takes away from these other things. So, and one of the other problems is you're basically being pushed to spend money on things you don't want to buy also. Not everyone's buying stuff that they don't need. Some people are pushed into it. Okay, societal pressure. You're pressured to have certain devices and technology if you work for another company. And that creates areas where you are pushed into. Um, now, where I want to go with this is the idea also that um, among the LDS population, home economics used to be pushed. It used to be an extremely high priority. That was started to decline in the 60s and 70s. I know people who grew up using home economics as a device to lower their bills and help their family. The idea is home economics used to be a self-sufficiency program. That's what it was meant to be. Home economics is self-sufficiency. So the idea is if you were in a really big mega corporation, okay, those big companies, the way they're able to make a profit and the difference between them going bankrupt and not has to do with controlling their expenses, making the ingredients that make their products. They can't live without doing that. The corporation dies if, if they don't do that. And that viewpoint among people and families has been lost, but it's similar. You can't really build a family and keep up with inflation unless you practice both income and home economic self-sufficiency together. You have to have both. And that's how you beat inflation. Now you have to ask yourself, why wasn't inflation faster before now? The reason is that they couldn't. If everyone knows how to make their own food, or clothes, they can't raise the prices on food and clothes. Okay, and more people knowing how to do and make those things means that there's enough supply that the prices of those goods can't be jacked up extremely quickly. You see, this this is what this means is the self-sufficiency of the people is being robbed. That's actually in the the scriptures, I think it's in Isaiah or Jeremiah somewhere, that the self-sufficiency of the people is being robbed in the last days. When self-sufficiency is lost and you don't learn skills, then you have no control over how much you're going to spend on these other things. So here is what I'm proposing. You need to get involved into making your own things. And that if you do so, you can save more money. You can use the money you save to have a family. Whereas you probably wouldn't be able to have a family if you didn't have access to that. This also means the difference of one or both parents having more time at home. If you can make your own things. There, it's not that hard. You only need to classify things into about four or five different categories. Shelter and housing, food and food storage, clothing, you know, making your own clothes, uh, fuel, both heating and for cooking, and transportation. You only need to think about transportation in terms of getting to and from work anyway, so, but you don't need to have a super fast car. You don't need to have a jet. You don't need to have a brand new car. People are brainwashed to think that if they don't have a super nice car that they won't have social opportunities. But if you have to have rich 
nice things to have friends, they're probably not they're probably not your friends anyway. So it comes down to do you want a better life? To have that better life, you want some time at home and some time with your family. And your family will be better off with one, at least one spouse at home, and the other having some time at home as needed also to help. To, to get there, instead of using more technology and wasting all of your time and resources on technology, instead you could be learning home industry and self-sufficiency skills at home. But most people aren't going to think about that. They're also going to be caught up in a pride game, the pride game. You're too proud to learn from your mistakes. You're too proud to see what's wrong in the society. And why are people falling into that trap? Because of social class systems and social class warfare, class warfare competing with the Jones. It doesn't matter. Ultimately, a family practicing self-sufficiency skills is going to have more in the long run than the Jones next door when the alternative would be spending things on spending money and resources on things you don't need to keep up with the Jones. This is why the comparison of homeownership among Amish, Mennonite, and LDS is extremely useful. Do we really need to have all this stuff? I mean, if someone told you you could have a choice between being a homeowner with a lower amount of technology compared to never owning a home, You'd be renting for the rest of your life, never owning anything, but you'd have computers, video games, and technology, but you would be rented to death and never be able to retire. Which would you actually choose? Think about that pretty hardly. Think about that. The answer is that it's not really worth it to have all of this nice technology if you're a captive, if you're captive by it. That's all I wanted to say for this video. Please like and subscribe. I'm also hoping that LDS people will see what they're losing and not just them, other people. If I had a choice between being rented to death and having technology and the second choice being a low technology level, but I'd own everything and I'd be able to work at my own pace and never be in debt and own everything, I would choose less technology.